Did you know preachers were so instrumental to the American Revolution that the British gave them a military name. They called them the Black Robed Regiment. A regiment is a military term. The preachers during that time were so instrumental in encouraging people to be independent from England, telling them about their individual rights, their God-given rights, that the British called them the Black Robed Regiment, said you've got to take care of, you've got to take out these folks right here. Because these people are really the ones fueling this revolution. A black robed regiment. Right there, that is a picture of John Peter Gabriel Muhlenberg. He was a pastor of two little churches in Woodstock, Virginia. And this was at the beginning of the Revolutionary War. And he was preaching one Sunday. Of course, he's wearing his black robe. And he's there in his congregation. Up there, the pulpit. And he's speaking from the book of Ecclesiastes. There's a time for this and a time for that. Time for war. There's a time for peace. He says we are not in a time of peace. He says we are in a time of war. He says if you don't fight for your liberties now, you will have no liberties left to fight for. And then he begins taking off his robe. And underneath his robe is the full military dress <coughs> of an officer in the Continental Army. He was also a state legislator at the time, but at this moment he was representing the armed forces. He was an officer. And he walked out the front of that church. He called on some drummers to start drumming. And he called them out. He said, join me. And that day, roughly 300 of his congregants joined him in front of that church. They became known as the 8th Virginia Regiment. Pastor. A preacher. Today, there is a nationwide movement of black-robed regiment pastors who want to do the same thing. Who want to lead their people in righteousness from the pulpit, but also in the public square. This is a few years ago. This is a, a rally for Restoring Honor, a Glenn Beck program. This is the Jefferson Memorial. Up there on stage is a representation of the Black Robe Regiment. These were clergy members from all over the country and they were invited to come up there and be a, a symbol of the modern Black Robed Regiment. It's happening right now. This is just a few years ago, but it's still going on. Did you know that pastors are leading their churches and voting according to their Christian values and not the color of their skin? This is a pastor in the south side of Chicago. A church of roughly 15,000. This individual, James Meeks, he's encouraging his church members to back the GOP candidate because he better represents their Christian values than the Democrat candidate. It's happening. This is a pastor in Thousand Oaks, California. Yep, California. And they need it. Pastor Rob McCoy of Calvary Chapel uh, decided he was going to run for the state assembly. Now they asked him, they said, well now when you started preaching sermons like this and when you told your, your church that you were going to run for office, did they get all upset and did they leave and did they storm out and protest? He said, no, we got more people. This is happening. Pastors across the country are affirming their freedom to preach about the issues from the pulpit. In fact, there is a group called Alliance Defending Freedom, and they are organizing preachers and pastors that on a certain day of the year, that they preach a sermon that they consider over the line, that maybe they think they're not supposed to preach, and they actually record the transcripts of these sermons and send it to the IRS. Because they know constitutionally a church should be able to say whatever it wants to. We have the First Amendment right to freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and also a church is a special entity that needs to be able to speak out against the evils of the day. The founders knew that the power to tax was the power to control, and they did not want any kind of state control over the church. That's Jefferson's separation. Churches, in fact, have more freedom than any other nonprofit group. <laughs> Did you know that a church does not even need to apply for a 501c3 status? 
They don't need to. A church is an entity that is nonprofit by its definition. If a group of people, if they pray, if they have worship services, if there's preaching, if they have bulletins or whatever it is that looks like a church, they are a nonprofit entity. By definition, they're special. Our founders set it up that way. They wanted a church to be free to do whatever they needed to do to keep our country right. All across the country, Americans are restoring their country to its founding principles. This is the 9-12 rally, the Tea Party rally a few years ago. I was there somewhere. Some people say the Tea Party's dead. They say it's gone. It's not gone. We just have jobs. <laughs> we just have somewhere to go Monday morning. We can't hang out in the streets of protest, but it's still going on. We're still doing it. We're still trying to take back our country. We're still trying to restore it to its founding principles.